Today I have with me the DF64V. I'm gonna be talking about how it performs for pour over and espresso. I'm gonna be talking about the good things and the bad things about this grinder. If you could please like and subscribe, that really helps me continue to produce more content. If you're looking at purchasing anything in the video, use the link below. I'll make a small commission at no extra charge to you. I have an Instagram and Patreon. You can find the links for everything in the description. Lastly, this was sent to me from Espresso Outlet and turn grinders they are both the same company the u.s distributor for this both ran by a guy named joe phenomenal customer service they sent me this for free they do not get to hear my response to this until it's live for everyone to see so first off i want to know i had an incredible amount of issues with this at the very beginning i got one of the very very early releases of this and at the beginning they had a lot of issues with stalling for this grinder so much so that they had a different board inside of it that you could replace. Mine had the newer board and it still had some issues in there, but they ended up resolving that. I sent back my old grinder and they sent me this new one, which is drastically, drastically better. There's one little difference on this grinder that you will not get. This is a black one and I have it fitted with Porta Keeper accessories here. So I have this little cup lift here, which is this is the stock one here. It comes in a wooden color with a wooden lid. I have 3D printed black ones to black it all out and it looks very, very nice that way. So let's go ahead and dive into it. This grinder has quite a bit of features in here. Uh, it has obviously this little cup holder, cup holder. You can't put a porta filter locked into it like the typical DF64s here. It has something that is completely unique in comparison to any other DF or Turin grinders, which is the removable magnetic chute here, which makes it very, very easy access to cleaning. You can simply sit that back in there. The power button is closest to me where you cannot see right here. Cable comes straight out the back rather than to the side. And it has variable RPM, which you can see indicated all the way from 600 RPM at the slowest rate to 1800 RPM at the fastest rate. And you can hear the difference here as I crank it up. This is at the fastest speed in the noise. And that is at the slowest speed. And then somewhere in between there. So it has some nice features here. This has a bellow system here to allow you to get any of the retentions out of the grinds. And you can also remove the bellows completely and just simply get all the grounds out with your hand. And that tends to work out pretty well. It comes with a brush and it also comes with a spray butter bottle for RDT, which is a little spritz of water on some beans to remove static. It also comes with this anti-popcorn device here, which allows you to slow feed the beans in while you're grinding and it prevents them from popping out and completely. I find this incredibly nice for the fact that you don't have to use the bellows and you can kind of set the grinder like this, which is my preferred method of using it. Now that we got over some of the basics on this grinder, it also comes with 64 millimeter flat burrs that are DLC coated, which are a little bit more premium than the standard turn grinders. And I find that to be true. Very, very good results in a lot of different methods here. So what I did was I pulled multiple similar shots on my Breville Dual Boiler using the same grind setting. I grind setting about 15 and pulled back-to-back -back shots, tasting them while changing the RPM. Now, one of the things with RPM is there is a lot of confusion about it when it comes to this grinder. If you grind too fine at too slow of an RPM, so if I set this to grind, say, setting five on the grinder, and I set it to 600 RPM, what's gonna happen is this grinder is gonna stop. And it's gonna be a very, very frustrating experience to the user and has been for a lot of people. One of the reasons for that is because it has a fail safe to keep the motor from breaking up. So if your motor is constantly trying to work and things aren't moving in there, that's gonna be a problem it's gonna overheat the motor so it shuts off completely. At first, I thought you had to remove all of the stuff on the inside of it, take the grinder completely apart to fix it. All you gotta do is simply unplug it, wait about 15 seconds, turn it to a coarser setting to higher RPM, and that'll usually shoot it out and take care of that issue. So when it comes to the grinder and the settings in particular, when you're grinding for espresso, which is my typically around 15 or so, they recommend grinding anywhere between 1600 RPM and 1000 RPM and not going all the way down to the 600 RPM in order to prevent that stalling. When it comes to doing, say, a light roast, they recommend not going below 800 RPM. So I tested this out and I intentionally made it stall and I 
intentionally had made some issues with it in order to test this. And I find that I could grind with the beans that I was using, which was a light roast from Archetype Coffee out of Omaha, Nebraska. And I found that I could grind all the way down to 700 RPM when I slow feed the beans, which means I just let them drop slowly into the grinder while it's running. I don't tend to have any issues and I could grind at 700 RPM for a pour over type setting around the setting 60 on my Turin DF64V. You're always basically going to want to turn this grinder on and then let the motor get up to speed and drop the grinds in there. That'll tend to give you the best results at all times. So when it comes to the variable RPM, there's a lot of question on whether or not that is worth it. And I would say it depends. It depends on what you're into. For me, when I pulled back-to-back -back shots at 1800 RPM and then I did it again at 1000 RPM, I didn't really find any taste difference when it comes to espresso. Now the interesting part is when it comes to pour over, which I have a nice pour over that was made by this. And it's really late at night when I'm actually filming this and it's really hard not to finish this uh, because it's so good and so well done. So one of the benefits of this grinder is really when it comes to pour over. When you have this grinder and you drop down the setting to say 800 for pour over and let the beans go in that way, it's gonna give you less fines in your cup, which means your pour over is gonna be very, very clean and I find that very, very good to be true. I definitely noticed the, the difference on seeing the amount of fines when I had a coarse setting at a higher RPM than a lower setting, than a lower RPM at that same setting which was nice to see. Great results either way. So I'm gonna go ahead and give you a little demo here. I'm gonna look over here and I'm gonna put this at a thousand and I'm gonna simply spritz my beans with water. This spray bottle and this little dosing cup does not come with the grinder. However, you can buy it on Amazon like I did and it's a nice little add-on feature here. So this is at setting 60 and that little chirping is just simple some ground residue in here. So this is at setting 60 at 1000 RPM. So now you can kind of hear what it sounds like and you can kind of see the mess that comes from making a pour over with this grinder. Pretty clean inside the chute here. Not too bad. Decent looking grinds, no issues whatsoever. You do want to spray your ground, your beans before you grind, which is not an abnormal thing for coffee grinders in today's world. Some of the DF64 grinders have a plasma generator in there in the DF684 Gen 2, in the DF64 Gen 2, and the new DF54, which is 54 millimeter flat forward. All of those have plasma generators. This one was not built into it. I'm not entirely sure why on it. Maybe it had any, something to do with the chute. So overall, when it comes to espresso, you're not gonna really need to mess with the changing of RPM. I haven't found a difference. Maybe you will, but personally didn't. If you want clean pour over cups, I think the RPM and having that slower option is incredibly nice. When it comes to buying it, this is $550, which might sound like a lot to some, but when it comes to the realm of coffee grinders, this is a very, very good deal. You'll for sure get better results than the Niche Zero on both pour over and espresso, in my opinion. Very, very clean cups of coffee on a pour over, and I, I really recommend it on that one. When it comes to pushing this over the Gen to DF64 that comes in about $400. It has a plasma generator. I like not having to spritz my grounds with a spray bottle that you don't have to do on the Gen 2 60, DF64. There's a lot of these grinders. The Gen 2 DF64 has that plasma generator. You don't really need to worry about spritzing it on that, which is really nice. But I like the pitch and I like the cleanliness in the cups I feel like I get are a little bit better out of this, which I think personally would be worth that extra $50. As long as you are okay with using the grinder in the proper way, you're not going to have issues with stalling if you do just simply unplug it and it's not near as big of a deal as everybody makes it out. But when you come and you expect to get this grinder and you expect to immediately turn it on, put it at 600 RPM, put it at setting 15 to make a shot of espresso, put 18 grams of coffee, it's going to stall and you're going to be frustrated. 
but that is not what this grinder is designed to do. And I even heard things with like the Legome P64, which comes in at quite the price tag, has that same issue. That's not how these grinders are meant. I did not know that at the beginning and I thought that was kind of a frustrating experience if I'm honest as a user. But when I learned more about what RPM is and how to use that, it does make a difference on how you use the grinder and you don't really need to go any lower than a thousand RPM anyway when it comes to espresso. And you really can use almost the entire setting of RPM when it comes to using a light roasted coffee for pour over. If you have a medium roast, I'm sure you can probably get down to the 1600, but or the 600, which that's not too far off, 600 and 700. I like the screen on the side of it. I think it gives great clarity on it. It's simple, easy to use. You simply just rotate that on the top of it. The grind setting is super, super user friendly. This is a great grinder. Now, my only main question, my only main concern on whether or not you should go out and buy this grinder is one, are you gonna save up a little bit more money and get the DF83V, which is the variable RPM of the 83 millimeter burst set? I'm not entirely sure how that goes, but it's really not that much more expensive and that might be worthwhile to go and spend some more money. The huge plus side to this grinder versus any of the other ones outside of the SD40 that Turn Grinder makes and Espresso Outlet distributes is the fact that this is very, very slim, very, very space efficient when it comes to your counter that you don't get with a lot of other grinders. I don't. The only grinder that I really have ever used and owned that is smaller than this is the Legome Mini by Optiono, uh, which is quite a bit smaller and it's designed to be really, really compact. And that has its drawbacks on this, on that. So this is the real comparison here. You're looking at $550, $600 or so for the Turin DF64V. And the closest competitor, in my opinion, to this is the Legome P64, which comes in at $1,600. So when it comes to the stalling things, which, again, aren't really problematic unless you go out of what the manufacturer recommends for this. So if you just go on turngrinders.com and you just read how to use this grinder, you're not going to have any issues with it for the most part. And for the off chance that you do, unplug it and plug it back in and you'll be fine to go. That's $1,000 worth of savings for the P Legome P64. Now that P64 might not have any stalling issues at all, but it is $1,000 more. So it's a turn grinder. It's not perfect. None of them are perfect, but they've gotten drastically better from before. I don't know. Is it worth it for you? For me, I think this is a great recommendation. I'm happy with this grinder. It's at a great price point. If you can't shoot it, the DF64 Gen 2 is, is great, but I think this just has a nice sleek factor. It looks really nice. The black accents that Porta Keeper did, the removable chute that's easier to clean to make sure that you're not getting back up in there. It's a very, very nice polished grinder that has could potentially have some stalling issues if you don't use it correctly. But again, use the grinder correctly. You're not gonna have issues. It'll be a great experience. That's my thoughts. Do you have any questions about this? My big question for you is do you want me to, do you wanna see this grinder matched up with the P64 by Legome? Because if that's the case and people want that, I'll get one and I'll do a comparison and I'll give you an honest review on whether or not the P64 is better if they're the same price point or better and worth the thousand dollars extra i don't really know haven't used it yet this is my first experience with a variable rpm grinder and i think it's definitely worth it for pour over not so much for espresso after my experience let me know if you have any questions love to hear from you make sure to stay tuned to my channel for the giveaway coming very very soon thank you so much for watching